Hello again, everybody, and Roll Tide. This is Roger Hoover with you from our CTSN studios in Tuscaloosa. Glad to welcome you to Crimson Drive, and it is presented to you by Regions Bank. Make sure you get your University of Alabama National Champions Visa check card and checks from Regions Bank. Just go to regions.com slash gobama to order yours today. Roll Tide with Regions Bank, the official bank of the, F of the SEC. Member FDIC. Terms, conditions, and fees may apply. Well, Alabama Athletics continues to have a very strong start start to 2021 we've seen a lot of wins of course we saw the football national championship last week and it's continued with some really great momentum in all sports here at the university of alabama as we start today's edition of crimson drive presented by regions bank why don't we first take a look at today's headlines and we start with men's basketball, a victory for the Crimson Tide on Tuesday night, 105-75 to at LSU. That was a game with first place on the line, but the Crimson Tide got off to a terrific start in that fall game as Alabama ended up making 23 three-pointers. That breaks an SEC record that Alabama had set last year against the Auburn Tigers with 22. Now the record again belongs to Alabama with 23. Hitting eight of those three-pointers, John Petty Jr., 24 points in the game, eight of 10 shooting from beyond the arc and for John Petty he already was the SEC player of the week that was announced on Monday may very well see him get that again coming up this week and he's been the SEC player of the week now two of the last three weeks how about freshman Joshua Primo he connected on six three-pointers in that game ended up with 22 points as the Crimson Tide picked up a really critical win against LSU again Alabama was 6-0 and going into the LSU game the Tigers were 5-1 and so first place was on the line Alabama now 7-0 and firmly in first place in the SEC standings. So with all that good momentum, Nate Oates and his group will be back in action on Saturday inside Coleman Coliseum against Mississippi State. Ben Howland's team, 9-6 and six on the year, and they've been 4-3 and three in SEC play. Three of those losses, some of them have been very close calls. So this is a very hard-nosed basketball team and a good team that Alabama will face coming up on Saturday back here in Tuscaloosa. Tip-off will be set for 5 p.m. Central. Our radio coverage on the network will begin at 4 p.m. And make sure you come back to the CTSN Facebook page because we will have hopefully the shoot around cam get you ready for tip off between Alabama and Mississippi State. Even though the season is firmly over for Alabama football, the honors keep rolling in for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Quarterback Mac Jones announced as the winner of the 2020 Manning Award, and that goes to the nation's best quarterback, and it goes after, after all the postseason stats are in as well, and then that award is heavily decided by Peyton Manning along with his brother Eli and, of course, their dad Archie Manning. So high praise for Mac Jones winning the 2020 Manning Award. Will Anderson Jr., outstanding linebacker for the Crimson Tide, he was named the Sean Alexander FWAA Freshman of the Year after he got all those sacks late in the season for the Crimson Tide. So great work by by Will Anderson to be named the Sean Alexander Freshman of the Year. And don't forget, National Champions gear is available on RollTide.com. In women's basketball, last Thursday, it was a comeback victory at 14th-ranked Mississippi State. 86-78 to was the final score as the Crimson Tide were down 11 at halftime. Got huge performances all throughout to get a big comeback victory for the Alabama Crimson Tide. At that point, Alabama was 4-1 in SEC play. And then Sunday... Back at home against 23rd-ranked Tennessee, it was a tough loss. 82-56 to was the final score. That was a game that was tied at 16 at the end of the first quarter, and then Tennessee started the second quarter on a 16-0 run. Really, it was tough for Alabama to overcome that as the Lady Vols get the win, but Alabama still in really good shape in the SEC as the Crimson Tide have a 4-2 and two overall record. No game tonight for Alabama. This is a bye week for the Crimson Tide in terms of not playing a Thursday game, but they will be at home against Auburn coming up at 1 p.m., and you can catch it on the CTSN. We'll also have our courtside cam for that game as well on the CTSN Facebook page. Alabama Gymnastics, Dana Duckworth's team, 2-0, wins against Kentucky. That was at home two weeks ago, and then last Friday night, it was a slim win at Missouri, but still a very good performance by the Crimson Tide, gaining some consistency early in the 2021 gymnastics season. Shania Adams, once again, a great performance by her. She was named the SEC Freshman of the Week, and coming up for gymnastics, speaking of the Auburn Tigers, they're not only here in women's basketball this weekend, but here in gymnastics on Friday night, 7.30 p.m., the meet will get started, and you can and watch all the coverage on the SEC network. 
Big week for Alabama baseball. We'll be talking some baseball coming up later on during Crimson Drive, but the Crimson Tide baseball team announced its 2021 schedule on Tuesday. Season will start on February 19th at Sewell Thomas Stadium against McNeese State. And then the SEC schedule, of course, will be tough, but here at home in Tuscaloosa this year, get ready to see some great matchups with Ole Miss, Tennessee, Auburn, Mississippi State, among others. But those are some really big ones to watch. And then the SEC tournament will be played as scheduled coming up in Hoover, Alabama from May 25th to the 30th. So a full schedule for Alabama baseball. We're certainly glad to see that. Same could be said for the Alabama softball team. They announced their 2021 schedule last Friday. For the Crimson Tide, their season will start on the road February 12th in Austin, Texas. So softball gets going a week earlier than baseball. And even though the season may start on the road for the Crimson Tide, plenty of games coming up at the Rhodes House at Rhodes Stadium on campus in Tuscaloosa starting the next weekend, February 19th against Liberty. Some great non-conference tournaments coming up before conference play begins. And then softball. They were supposed to host the S. SEC tournament last year before it was canceled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Good news with that as well as the Crimson Tide will be hosting the SEC tournament from May 12th to the 15th here in Tuscaloosa. So that sets the stage for what we have today on Crimson Drive presented by Regions. Coming up, we will have a visit with Brian Passink to talk some Crimson Tide basketball. He's our color analyst on the CTSN for radio. Then we'll be joined by the head coach of the Crimson Tide, Brad Bohannon. So we look forward to hearing from Coach Bo talk about not only the baseball schedule, but also the team he has in store for 2021. Nate Oates and John Petty were all smiles after the victory against LSU on Tuesday. We'll have some of their comments after the men's basketball win against LSU from Tuesday. And then Dana Duckworth will round things out as she and her gymnast will preview the Auburn meet coming up later in the show. So once again, a really busy edition of Crimson Drive presented by Regions Bank, but we start with men's basketball. Brian Passink has been calling men's basketball games on the radio along with Chris Stewart and Tom Stipe for many, many years, and I think he's enjoying this year about as much as any for Alabama basketball. The great start that Alabama has had in conference play, 7-0 in the SEC, and right now Alabama riding an eight-game winning streak. So let's go to our conversation with CTSN color analyst Brian Passink. And, of course, we're joined by the other person on the Alabama basketball in the basketball family from the mean streets of Mountain Brook. It's Brian Passink. Uh, Britton Johnson's uh, been called that a few times by Chris Stewart in the last few broadcasts, but how's everything going in the brook today, Brian? Listen, it's going great. Uh, Britton Johnson has helped given the community a good name uh, with the way that that he and his teammates have been playing. But uh, what a performance last night for Alabama. And, listen, it's great to have Britton and the, and the guys that uh, contribute so much to this team be able to play so much. Uh, I don't think anybody anticipated how much playing time uh, the guys that, uh, you know, the, some of the walk-ons and some of the guys that you didn't anticipate getting a ton of minutes in SEC play, they're getting a lot of playing time, which has been fun to see. Eight wins in a row for the Alabama Crimson Tide. It was started with the ETSU game right before Christmas, and then after that, seven wins to begin conference play. Just how do you describe the run Alabama's been on? Well, it's incredible. I mean, historical, really, when you look at uh, the the record in the SEC. Uh, last time that Alabama's been in this position was 1987. Uh, you know, that was a Sweet 16 team, a team that won – uh, the SEC regular season championship. And, um, you know, th- those were the, the days of the Plaid Palace and Wimp Sanderson. Um, you know, the last time that Alabama was 6-0, and now 7-0 and in SEC play. Uh, it's been a long time, and fans are excited, and this team is playing at such a high level on both ends of the floor. It's been so much fun to see. Really has been fun to get John Petty back again. He had that one game suspension right before Christmas. Has come back though, and from everything we've heard, has been a model citizen. Has been doing everything this coaching staff wants, and it's paying off in his play right now. Well, he's playing as well as anybody in the country. I mean, he's been the SEC Player of the Week two out of the last three weeks, uh, reigning National Player of the Week, uh, and right now Alabama is as hot as anybody in college basketball, and it's because of guys like John Petty and his teammates, you know, to to be where Alabama is right now, you have to have a lot of things. And you have to have talent, certainly, uh, but you have to have uh, leadership and and unselfish play and playing with toughness. And I think John Petty has epitomized all those things uh, over the last month or so. It's been an incredible run, 
but there's still a lot of basketball to be played, and Alabama still has a, a lot of goals in front of them. They want to compete for a championship in the regular season, want to get uh, to the NCAA tournament, and they're in a great position right now. Uh, but you just got to continue to do what they've been doing, and, and hopefully they'll do that. Of course, I'm sure you had a lot of great moments in your career that were similar, but the start that Petty got off to against LSU, and he was six for his first six, what, from beyond three-point land, really everybody was in a good groove early on to start that game. How do you describe that? Well, I have had moments like that in an Alabama uniform, but it was in warm-ups with nobody on me and playing horse against my teammates. Uh, the, I think the, the only time I ever made seven straight threes. <laughs> but just a, a, an incredible performance by John Petty and his teammates. You know, for Alabama uh, to hit a, an SEC record 23 made threes in a game as big as that, just incredible to see. And, you know, this is a team that has a bunch of guys that can really shoot the ball, obviously. Uh, but they're also a, a team that's playing unselfishly. They're looking for teammates. They're driving it, kicking it. Great example of last night is Alabama sets a school record, a conference record for threes. And one of the best shooters in the country, Jane Shackelford, doesn't make a three. And, you know, he had a career high eight uh, assists on a night where he knew it's, it, it was really flowing for his teammates and they were hot. And, and guys like Quinterly were having career nights from the three point line. Josh Primo, obviously, what John Petty was doing. Uh, but Jane Shackelford uh, was distributing, defending playing at a high level and just speaks to uh, the, the unselfishness of this team because, you know, he's a guy that could get hot. He could hit seven threes uh, in a stretch as well as anybody uh, in the SEC. But uh, a fun game to watch for so many different reasons. But, um, you know, for Alabama to play as well as they did with so much on the line, first place in the SEC was on the line last night. And, and Alabama came through in a way that I don't think anybody anticipated. We thought that would be a, a back-and-forth game. I mean, LSU was actually favored in the game. So to look up in the second half and for Alabama to be up by 43 points was mind-blowing. But with the way this team has uh, improved as a defensive unit, uh, with the way they distribute the ball, and on nights when the shots are falling, especially from three, uh, this team's capable of, of doing big things, and they did – Something really big last night in Baton Rouge. Someone that hit a lot of three-pointers was Joshua Primo, and he came in with a lot of high expectations, really, as one of the marquee players in the signing class for Coach Oates, five-star recruit. How have you seen him develop as his freshman season's gone along to what we saw on Tuesday, getting those 22 points against LSU? Well, you know, first of all, he's a, a really talented young player, and and uh, he's really young. You know, he just turned 18 and, and reclassified. Uh, should be a senior in high school. Thankfully, he's a freshman in college, and he's making a difference for a, a top 20 team uh, in in Alabama right now. Uh, he, he brings you so much on both ends of the floor, can really shoot the ball as he showed last night, is a playmaker, uh, is getting better and, and doing a great job defensively. Uh, but he's, he's a really talented player like a lot of these uh, young Alabama guys, but uh, also playing unselfishly. And uh, great to see the, the way that, that he's fitting in with these veterans. And it's uh, what makes this team so good is you have talent, you have depth, you have experience. But then uh, you have guys like Josh Primo, a freshman, a young player that has blended in very well with some of these veterans like John Petty, Herb Jones, Alex Reese, Jordan Bruner. Uh, this team has uh, a lot of different pieces. And, you know, a guy like Primo has fit in really well. Building an early lead like Alabama did, maintaining that all throughout the game, scoring 105 points. Uh, was Tuesday night the LSU game really the best example of what Nate Oates wants his offense to be here at Alabama? Yeah, I think so. And, you know, you can't expect to shoot 80% from the three-point line, which is, you know, where Alabama was through the majority of that game. And, you know, 23 made threes in a game is not going to be something you do every night. Uh, but the fact that they're capable of that, it, it will strike fear into the, the opponents. And uh, for Alabama uh, to get the, the quality of looks that they've gotten recently, not just in the LSU game, but really since conference play has started, this team is clicking offensively. Uh, they're getting great looks because of dribble penetration. They're, they're, they're able to get in the lane, kick it out. They're making the extra pass. They understand um, who's hot when to get guys the ball, 
And when you put five guys out on the court with proper spacing and the ability to get downhill on dribble drives, uh, you're very difficult to defend. And Alabama has uh, been as hard to defend as anybody in, in the country. But the improvement that this program has made in the last year on the defensive end is staggering. I mean, Alabama was not a, a very good defensive team last year, about 120th in the nation in defensive efficiency. And in just one year's time, Alabama is one of the best defensive teams in the country, top 20 in defensive efficiency. So about a 100-spot improvement uh, on defense nationally, which is incredible uh, that this, this team has gotten so much better. We, we thought they would be better. That was a point of emphasis in the offseason for Nate Oates and his staff and this program uh, because you knew you felt like you knew what they could do on the offensive end with the, the talent, the depth, and the skill set that this team has um, on the offensive end. Could they – improve on the defensive end the answer is is yes in a big way a dramatic improvement on that end of the floor which is why on nights when shots are falling Alabama is still giving themselves a chance to win games against good teams and we've seen that so far as good as it's been for the Crimson Tide again 7-0 in SEC play playing at a really high level there's still so much for this team to accomplish and they still have to keep working hard uh, what do you think are some of the biggest things the coaching staff still wants to see this team improve on in the next few games well yeah I think they could they can get better in um in defensive rebounding limiting turnovers um you know those are all areas that they've been good in but you, you can always be better and you know while they, they have been playing at an incredibly high level. You know, the areas that, that I think has made the biggest difference are the areas that, that are um, things that you can control, like effort and toughness, uh, which is, you know, you go into the practice gym every day and you can work and get better at those things. And, um, you know, that, that being the point of emphasis uh, is really paid dividends for this team because you can't control if shots go in. You can control the quality of shot, and they're getting great looks. So, you know, this team has big time goals, and it's uh, I think led by those seniors. You know, they want to accomplish something great this year, and they're in a great position to do that. But the second you let up, as good as the SEC is, uh, you can stub your toe. And, and while this winning streak has been a whole lot of fun, with when you look at what's ahead uh, in terms of, of the teams that Alabama will play. If you let up at all, uh, you could go the other way and, and go on a losing streak. So uh, this team is is really in a great spot. They just have to continue to do what they do and try to get better every day. Uh, NATO's talked about it in the post game after the LSU game. You, you're never really going to stay the same. You're either getting better or you're getting worse. And the focus for this team is to get better. And trying to get better against a team now on Saturday that is very well coached by Ben Howland in Mississippi State. This is a hard-nosed team. Uh, what kind of game do you expect coming up at Coleman on Saturday, Brian? Well, I, I think Mississippi State has been one of the, the surprise teams in the SEC. I, I thought they would really take a step back after losing uh, three players to the NBA. Last year's team, even though there wasn't an NCAA tournament, you know, they were going to be in the NCAAs with, with the way that they had performed last year they lost a lot uh but you know they've got some guys back that have played at a high level this is one of the best backcourts in the sec with with dj stewart and iverson molinar Th these guys can really play on both ends of the floor and you know going into last night they lost to old miss in a rivalry game but going into last night uh this is a a, a mississippi state team uh that had only lost two games uh one of those uh was to, in double overtime to uh, to Kentucky, they lost a, a game they really should have won to Texas A&M. So, you know, they they um, are a team that is very dangerous, very capable of beating you. Alabama's going to have to show up and play well. You can't relax. Um, you can't read the press clippings. This team has done a great job of not doing that, but it's got to continue Saturday against a quality opponent in Mississippi State. We're certainly excited to get back inside Coleman Coliseum for that ball game. But on Tuesday, of course, we were at Baumhauer's Victory Grill in Vestavia Hills. We've been there. We've been in Tuscaloosa. Who knows? Maybe we'll go to Baumhauer's around the state coming up for more road games and our remote broadcast. But just how much fun was that, uh, getting to interact with Alabama fans and having them supply the energy that if we were in a studio, we would not have? Yeah, it's it's been really one of the highlights of the season that I don't think anybody anticipated you know, we started off just doing these in a 
studio and, and Bryant Denny and, and just trying to figure out a way to broadcast the games. But uh, doing these games at the, the Bomb Howers at Tuscaloosa and Birmingham, hopefully some other spots around the state, has been a great, I think, the feedback that I've gotten, I know you have as well, and Chris and Tom, it is the fans are really enjoying it. And I know we are. And there was a ton of energy in the building uh, yesterday in, in Vestavia at the Bomb Howers. And when those threes were raining, you know, you, you, you wish you could have been there. Uh, but I promise you, it was louder in Bomb Howers than it that was at the Maravich Assembly Center in front of all those other <laughs> fans. We were having a great time. And uh, it's great to be with the fans. And it's a unique season, no doubt about that, with what's going on around the, the country and the world. Uh, but we are definitely making the most of it with, with some of these broadcasts for road games. Good time to be part of the Chris Stewart team, right? <laughs> <laughs> it always is. <laughs> well, Brian, I uh, really have enjoyed this visit. Uh, always enjoy your work on the radio. Just a uh, roll tide. Look forward to seeing you on Saturday at Coleman Coliseum. Roll tide, Roger. Appreciate it. Well, really fun to catch up with Brian Passing, especially like that. Of course, he, we do so much coverage for Crimson Tide men's basketball on the radio, but uh, Brian always loves a format like that to really take a deep dive into the roster and how this team is playing. So really appreciate him for his time. Catch Chris Stewart, Brian Passing, Tom Stipe, and myself coming up for the call of Alabama against Mississippi State on Saturday, 5 p.m. tip-off at Coleman Coliseum. Our coverage on the radio will start at 4 o'clock as Alabama hopefully continues rolling and tries to get a, another win in conference conference play Alabama going for not only nine straight wins overall but eight straight to begin conference play we'll switch gears now to baseball and we are getting closer to the start of the Crimson Tide baseball season and earlier this week we got the very good news that it will be a full kind of normal schedule for the Alabama baseball team starting on February 19th at home against McNeese State here's my visit from earlier this week with Alabama head coach Brad Bohannon now joined by Coach Bohannon, and Coach, it's finally here. Baseball season, we have a schedule. you got to be getting really excited for mid-February in Tuscaloosa. Roll Tide. Yeah, we can't, can't wait to get started. You know, it's four weeks from Friday, uh, February the 19th. will be our first game against McNeese State. And, um, you know, this offseason was a, a little odd, just like uh, the, the summer and the fall. You know, our kids didn't come back from Thanksgiving break, so it was about seven weeks that we didn't see our kids. And, you always have a few concerns when you go that long without seeing and touching your, your players. But uh, the guys did a great job over the break. They trained really hard. They came back in great shape. And, uh, you know, we've been doing some skill instruction and uh, just really, really pleased with where the roster is right now. We're uh, we're really athletic. We look right getting off the bus. We've got stuff on the mound. Uh, we've got some, some twitch and some physicality and athleticism. And just really, really excited to, to see what it looks like here in a month. And you got to be excited as well about this pitching staff that Alabama brings back, uh, highlighted by your Friday night starter from a year ago, Connor Prelip. Yeah, Connor special. Um, you know, I really tried last year. We were uh, really high on him, but tried to uh, downplay expectations for him. It's just really odd in the Southeastern Conference, or really anywhere, that you see a freshman start opening day or start Friday night of a series, but he had, had earned that opportunity and he just continues to get better at a really fast rate. And, um, you know, we, we finally can match up on the first game of a series. That's been a challenge, you know, for us in, in my time here. So we're going to go to the ballpark every Friday. doesn't matter who we play or who's pitching for the other team. We're going to feel like we have a legitimate chance to win. Um, Chase Lee and Brock Guffey are, are two guys that have a lot of experience pitching in relief. Uh, so feel really strong about the back end of the game. And, um, you know, I did a media interview a couple of weeks ago and they were asking about, hey, who's going to start on Saturday or Sunday? And I said, hey, we, we've got like a pile of guys that are 90-94 and, and some of them have a little better command or maybe a better break ball or better change up. But, um, you know, compared to where our staff was two or three years ago to say that, that we have seven or eight guys that are 90-94 that – um, have a legitimate chance to, to start on Saturday or Sunday is, is just, um, it's, it's exciting. Yeah, exciting to see the depth that you have with the pitching staff. Can the same be said for the position players you have coming back this year? Well, I like our position player group. Well, we need to stay healthy. We're probably not quite as deep there as I would like to be, but, uh, but I do like our group. So uh, actually I actually feel like we have a little bit more experience. You know, guys like Sam Prater, Drew Williamson, TJ Reeves, they've, they've been around the block a little bit, and things are just a little bit slower for them. And, you know, Owen Diodati has never 
had an SEC at bat, but he's got a lot of maturity and a, and a lot of talent. Same thing with Peyton Wilson's a second-year player that we're excited about. So, you know, those guys give you a nice core uh, uh, and some maturity in the way that they work and compete that, you know, maybe some of the other guys you can hit down in the bottom and, and don't really have to uh, put them in a, a, a position where you're really, really counting on them until they go out and do it and earn it. Trying to play sports during the COVID-19 pandemic is always full of unknowns. And I'm sure for you going into fall baseball practice, there had to be a lot of unknowns about what the guys did over the summer, what kind of baseball shape they stayed in. What did you see uh, during the fall series you were able to have here in Tuscaloosa? Well, to be quite honest, I, I was uh, a little frustrated the first half of the fall. And, we, you know, we have great kids from great families and, you know, they work well. But um, the first half of the fall, it was really sloppy and uh, I think that's, you know, to, in some ways a result of the kids just didn't play a lot, you know, in the, the previous several months, you know, they lost the back half of the spring season and, um, you know, kids around the country in college baseball did, didn't get to play a lot over the summer. So, you know, the way our sport works, it's a sport of repetition and, uh, you know, we play a lot and there's just no substitute for playing the game. So we made some really strong progress the last, uh, the last third of the fall that we need to continue uh, progressing, you know, we need to, to get better at playing baseball. And I know it sounds so trite, but that's what we've just been hammering our guys with. Like, hey, we just we just need to play better. We got a lot of talent. We just need to be more consistent and, and play better. And that'll be something that they're going to continue to hear from me, and they, they, our fans and our media will probably continue to hear from me as well. Could that be something we see throughout college baseball? And we even saw it a little bit in Major League Baseball when they were able to resume last summer. You know, the pitching was ahead of the hitting for a long time because you just can't replicate at-bats. And you mentioned the repetitions are so big. But, I mean, these guys have not swung a bat in a competitive game in a long time. Yeah, that's a good point, Roger. And, and just talking to my colleagues around the league, I think that's a common theme. Uh, one, that the scrimmages were sloppy around the country throughout the fall. And uh, I think you're going to see more power stuff on the mound than you've ever seen before in college baseball. It sounds like there's just a, a pile of guys around the league that are, you know, mid nineties. And uh, I think you're probably going to see some more small ball earlier in the game, uh, probably more strikeouts. You know, a lot of these pitchers for several months, they just trained, you know, so I think there's just going to be a ton of velocity uh, and, and, and power secondary stuff. So, um, you know, we've got our share of that, but uh, so does everybody else around the league, and hopefully we can be better at executing and getting those big two-out hits when we need them. What can you tell us about some of the freshmen and some of the newcomers on the Crimson Tide roster? It's another good group, and I, I, this is finally the first time since I've been here where we don't have to really count on any of those guys unless they go out and earn it, and some of them will. Um, two infielders are going to play a lot, Caden Rose and Bryce Eblen. Uh, are two really good players. They came back from uh, the winter break and they, they just, things are a little bit slower for them. Um, they both gained some strength and just getting more consistent in the way they're playing. And on the mound, Grayson Hitt is a guy that uh, has just got a ton of upside. He's still a little rough around the edges, but he's just really athletic and left-handed and kind of works at that 90-94 range with a really good ball that he throws for a strike. So, um, you know, he, he's a guy that's going to get a lot of opportunity. And Jake Eddington's got a really big arm. Uh, you know, again, um, you know, he's a freshman and uh, there'll be some growing pains, but he's somebody that's, uh, I mean, looks like he's going to throw the ball 100 miles an hour. So um, we're excited about those guys and they're going to get plenty of opportunity. Fans have really been wondering what this college baseball season could look like uh, starting during the COVID-19 pandemic. But for you, were you glad that the schedule is pretty much normal? Uh, you were able to schedule a, you know, four weekend series against non-conference opponents. SEC schedule looks normal. Just what can you tell us about the scheduling process and everything that went into getting the schedule on paper like we saw released on uh, Tuesday? I am glad that we have a somewhat normal schedule. And uh, a month ago, I didn't think that was going to be the case. You know, if you look at all the other sports that have been played to this point, they had delayed starts and reduced schedules. So um, certainly thought there was a chance of that happening with college baseball. And just very thankful that as of right now that we're going to get to play a full 56 game schedule. You know, these kids lost half two thirds of their season last year and uh, they just need to play. Um, 
a lot of teams around the country have bigger rosters. You know, we don't. We only have two seniors and two juniors. So in a year where uh, rosters are bigger than ever before and there's more experience than ever before, <laughs> we have two seniors and two juniors in a 34-man roster. But that's just kind of the, the dynamic dynamics of, of being at our university. So uh, I'm excited about the schedule, excited that we're playing, you know, a traditional 30 game league schedule and um, really ready to get in the middle of it. Yeah, it starts off with McNeese State and then after that Wright State and Tuscaloosa. And then you get to go on the road to the College of Charleston. And it's always been a solid baseball program. You got to be excited for that trip in non-conference play. Those first four weeks are, are a little more challenging than they have been since I've been here. And um, you know, kind of as I alluded to earlier, I expect us to be in a lot of close games in league play. And I didn't think that this group needed to play, you know, a bunch of low D1 schools from from up north. Um, there's been times in the past where I really thought we needed, a, a, you know, a bigger margin for error early uh, and needed to win to get some confidence. This group doesn't lack confidence. This group needs to play in some close games and, and we need to to make sure that we know how to win those close games. So, you know, Wright State is a team that's uh, in a regional most every year that's going to win their league. Uh, College of Charleston and Stetson are two schools that maybe the uh, not so casual uh College baseball fans not familiar with them, but those are teams that are going to have RPIs in the top 100. So, um, you know, this this is not a schedule where anybody should expect us to start out 19 and 0. Um, and and we, we'll get off to a good start because we have a good team, but we need to play good teams because we're going to play 30 of those in, in type games in the league play. Yeah, that takes me right to one of my final questions of the SEC schedule announced as well. Some great matchups, not only on the road, but at home in Tuscaloosa. And even if it is limited capacity inside Sewell Thomas Stadium, I know you want the fans there and supporting your Crimson Tide. The SEC is uh, in baseball, especially the SEC West, is the toughest division in all of amateur athletics. Um, you know, there's probably going to be four teams in the West alone that'll be ranked in the top 10 of, of some poll. All seven teams in the West, including Alabama, uh, are going to be legitimate top 25 caliber teams. Uh, it's an incredibly uh, difficult league. Um, if you watch any SEC game, no matter who we play, you're going to see future big leaguers on the field. Um, uh, this is a really fun team. We have a good team. We have a very good team. We've got uh, a lot of kids on the field that are going to be draft picks, and some guys are going to play in the big leagues. And um, if you're an Alabama baseball fan, you should be really excited uh, about our schedule, uh, about this group. Um, don't wait for league play to start to come out and watch us. Uh, don't wait for us to get off to a good start. Just um, c come see us. We, we, you're going to really enjoy watching this group. No doubt. Well, we know there are some individual workouts going on for the Crimson Tide. I believe full team practice will start on Friday the 29th. But just uh, what's the work that's going to happen between uh, the 29th when practice starts and then February 19th when McNeese State is in town to begin the 2021 season? Well, the kids are training hard right now, and we're just a little bit limited on how much time we can have with them. Luckily, the weather has really cooperated. So, you know, they're getting into swing shape and uh, and fielding shape and throwing bullpens. And once team practice officially starts uh, on January the 29th, we'll, we'll scrimmage a lot in that three-week period until the, the 19th. So uh, just really pleased with where the roster is, and, and the kids are in shape, and they're really, really anxious to play. Uh, I think mentally they we could play a game tomorrow and the kids would really compete at a high level um, not sure how we would execute but the the mentality is there so re just really can't wait to to see what it looks like when we put it all together on the 19th well that sounds good well coach thank you for joining us best of luck as you have your spring training coming up getting ready for the start of college baseball season just roll tide and all the best to you in alabama okay thank you roger roll tide And thanks to the head coach of the Crimson Tide baseball team, Brad Bohannon, for joining us. Uh, again, we know there's a lot of excitement about Crimson Tide baseball. Again, the season will start on February 19th at a home in Tuscaloosa against McNeese State and a full schedule coming up for the Crimson Tide. So make sure if you're available to go and if tickets are available, go to Sewell Thomas Stadium and support Alabama baseball. Fans have been supporting Alabama basketball. The men's team off to a terrific start in conference play. Again, 7-0 so far this season. We just had a great conversation earlier 
with Brian Passink, the color analyst, and then we wanted to play you these comments as well after the ball game from Tuesday night as Nate Oates and John Petty met with the media. Again, Petty is on a tear right now. He's once again the SEC Player of the Week, and he turned in a terrific performance against LSU, knocking down eight three-pointers. So now we'll let you listen in to what the kind of the last two or three minutes of the media session that Coach Oates and John Petty had after the win in Baton Rouge. Go to uh, Steve Holton, you're next. Uh, congratulations on the win, guys, uh, for both uh, JP and Coach. I, to, to JP in particular, I was hoping you could speak about uh, the chemistry that this team has had and uh, what, what you guys are going to do building-wise uh, for the rest of the season with all this momentum. Uh, our, our team chemistry is out the roof right now. Um, like I said, I think it starts with our, our senior leaders, keeping our guys locked in. Uh, on the offensive end, our guys are moving the ball. On defensive end, our guys are helping each other. We're talking. And, and I think that helps a lot with the flow of the game. Um, with the momentum, you know, we, we try not to really think about think about it, we, but we know we have it. So we just try to keep level heads and just keep playing the same way we've been playing, going out, dominating. All right, we got uh, time for two more questions. Let's start with Michael Casagrande. For Nate, have you ever seen a team come out and shoot that well so early in the game? Have you ever had an experience like that? No, oh, I mean, I saw Petty do it at Sanford last year. That was pretty impressive. But to do it against, I mean, this was a first place game. If they beat us, they are the number one seed because we would have been tied. They would have the tiebreaker. So we're playing for first place in the SEC and come out with multiple guys shooting like, no, I've never. That was kind of crazy. I don't need, how many do we have before the first media timeout? Do you even know? I don't get no, threes. Four. Four threes before the first media timeout. Yeah, I don't get stat sheets anymore with COVID for whatever reason. But yeah, I, we were on fire and then we came out the next four minutes. We're on fire. Quinterly comes off the bench and hits a bunch. I think he was three or four in the first half. Petty was seven of eight. And I think Primo might have been, what was Primo in the first Probably. half? Four for four, I yeah, think. Four. Yeah. So that was kind of ridiculous shooting first half. But I'll say this, though. All three of those guys I just listed, in addition to Shaq and, and Herb, some other guys, they are in the gym all the time. Like, so they deserve to make shots. When you're in the gym working like these guys work, you deserve to make shots. All right, last question. We'll go to Tyler Martin. Yeah, this is for Nate. Nate, you've always talked about playing your best basketball at the right time toward March. I know we're just now in the middle of January, but is there another level to this team after beating Arkansas and LSU by a combined 60 points? Yeah, there actually is because we we're still making mistakes. But 16 and 14 turnovers those two games. We're averaging 15 turnovers those two games. But there's, there's guys that are not playing particularly well right now that have a lot more in them that can give us a lot more. You know, the rebounding, we were Pretty good until the last eight minutes. I was a little disappointed with how we closed the game in the last eight, but you know, the rebounding, we got to continue to stress and get better at. So, there's, I mean, we'll do a cleanup from this game. There may not be too many cleanups, but I'm going to do a cleanup. We're going to show it on Thursday. I'm going to get the guys off tomorrow and we'll show the cleanup from this game. And we, we just got to keep getting better. I mean, as soon as we think there's nothing more to improve, you're, you're going backwards. You're either getting better or getting worse. And we're not trying, we're, trying to get better every, every single game out. So I do think there's another level we can get to. Now, whether we go 53% from three or not, you know, that's another story. We can't control all that. But what we can't control is the effort stuff, and we got to keep getting better at all that stuff. All right. Thank you, Coach. I appreciate it. That was the head coach of the Crimson Tide men's basketball team, Nate Oates, joined by the reigning SEC Player of the Week, John Petty Jr., and maybe once again he'll be named the SEC Player of the Week after the great performance he had against LSU. Don't forget Alabama against Mississippi State coming up on Saturday inside Coleman Coliseum. 5 p.m. tip-off. Our coverage on the radio will start at 4 o'clock and head right back here to the CTSN Facebook page for the pregame warm-ups and the pregame show getting you set to go for Alabama basketball. That's coming up on Saturday inside Coleman Coliseum. Coleman Coliseum. Tomorrow night, there will be Alabama gymnastics as the gymnastics team welcomes in the Auburn Tigers. Dana Duckworth's group so far has picked up a couple of victories, home against Kentucky, and then last week, a tight win on the road at Missouri. But Alabama is 2-0, performing well and earlier in the week. It was head coach Dana Duckworth, along with a few members of the gymnastics team, meeting with the media. Um, from, the, uh, from the left... We have Makari Doggett, head coach Dana Duckworth, and Alonza Cloffer, 
Coach, can you uh, start us off with an opening statement, uh, a little bit about Mrs., uh, Missouri, sorry, and, uh, and then looking forward to this weekend with Auburn? Well, we were really glad to be able to get our first road meet under our belt. Obviously, Beam is the greatest place for improvement, but we had some excellent individual moments. Uh, as a team, I would say we left a lot on the table in every event. And so, you know, the ladies are using that to fire them up for this week and just stay on the attention to detail. Uh, that's what it's going to be about. We talked on uh, Sunday that competition is our best friend, and it really, truly is the only way that we can, can learn and, and, as a staff, help our ladies get better. So a huge shout out to Shania Adams. She was just named today as the freshman of the week for an excellent, strong all around performance in Missouri. And uh, we're just feeling very blessed that we are healthy and that we are continuing to get to compete each week and just looking forward to every opportunity we're given. And so we will learn, get better and move forward. Alonza, this has been a year where uh, more so than um, years um, in the last couple of years, that we've seen a mixture of um, of newcomers and veterans in the lineup. Um, how has that made a difference um, for your um, y'all start? I think especially this year we've come in and we've all worked really hard and push each other in the lineups and everything. And even the freshmen, they're pushing our lineups. They're making us better, even like as a vet, just to be a part of the uh, lineups are huge. It's a it's an earned spot. So I think in terms of um, depth, it's helped us a lot, and we're going to need it. If anything happens with COVID, we're ready. Makari, uh, an All-American on the uneven bars last year, um, and you started off with two strong routines this year on the bars. Do you feel like you picked up um, where you left off last year, or do you feel maybe you're even a little bit ahead of where you started last year? Um, I think especially with COVID, it's just been a little bit different with my training over the summer. Um, but coming in, I just knew that we had to push harder than ever and just get to where I wanted to be, where I was last year, as soon as possible. And I think just having that mindset set me up for um, success in coming into the season at the beginning. And I think doing a good job and everybody else is pushing us to be better, like Lon said. So, yeah, we're excited. <laughs> All right, with that, we're going to open it up for questions. Katie, uh, welcome back to The Beat. Do you want to start us off with the first question? I would love to. Um, I guess this can be for both the girls and Dana. Um, looking at the schedule from last year, uh, the meet that was supposed to be when the world stopped was elevate the stage against Auburn. So um, I know there's a lot of new faces on this team, newcomers, but y'all are both on the team last year. Does this kind of feel like a full circle moment or finally getting back into it, competing against Auburn this week, and then just kind of talk about how important this rivalry meet is against Auburn? I think it definitely is like a full circle. And we, even last year, like we were so hungry to be able to compete with Auburn just like any of the other teams. And I think this week it's just important for us to focus on ourselves and we've done the preparation and we're ready to compete. I would add that the Iron Bowl of Gymnastics is always a fun competition. Being that we have an all SEC schedule, you know, it's not just about the team we're competing against in the SEC, which is always going to be competitive. It's competing against every team in the country every week, really. And so I think the focus is we are excited the students are back. We want them there. We want to feel their energy. Uh, the fans that are able to come, we want them to just scream and yell because there's nothing better than an in-state robbery. And, you know, it's funny you brought up March 12th and when we were supposed to compete Elevate the Stage and it just kind of reminded me about it, honestly. We've been so ultra-focused on what we need to do today that uh, you really just kind of brought that to my, to my memory, you know? Yep. Okay, next up. Yeah, this is a question for Alonzo. Um, you know, like Katie said, it's Alabama and Auburn. It's the Iron Bowl of gymnastics, huge rivalry. What would this mean to you as a senior to be able to beat Auburn in your senior year? Definitely, again, just focusing on ourselves and what we need to do for this competition is what's most important. But, again, having that rivalry is so awesome and to be a part of this team and do what we do best, and that's what's going to make it the best part. Katie? Um, I guess this can be for anyone, but last week, um, 
Fanny, you kind of already talked about the struggles on beam, but just also how important, though, was that for the team to face that adversity and then Luisa close it out with a strong routine? And then how can you take that into this next meet and the rest of the season um, facing adversity like that? Adversity is a gift. We talk about it all the time, that you have to thank the bad turn because that is what's going to make you more present. It's going to make you more aware. And it's really how you can hone in and figure out what each individual athlete needs to do to be at their very best. You know, ultimately, our goal is to consistently hit routines under pressure. And you can create every environment you want to in the gym to try to create that pressure. But until you're actually in competition is when it gets really real. And I just speak to that we're going to continue to focus on being intentional with everything that we do. And we have a lot of confidence. Um, we were asked last week, like, where's your biggest weakness? And I have to say that if everyone does what they're capable of doing, we won't have a weakness. We will be strong on all four events. And that's really what our goal is, to hit 24 for 24 and continue to work that mental toughness that's going to be needed to be at the top. Thank you. Mikey? Uh, yeah, going off of, of what you just said, um, you know, you believe that everyone can hit 24 for 24. Um, everyone at least has that potential to do that. Um, do you believe that coming up against Auburn on Friday night, that you're going to have to do that? Because Auburn, of course, they're a pretty good team too. Do you think you'll have to um, pretty much play perfectly in order to uh, get with a win there? Our focus – is truly about the best performance each individual athlete can have. Because if we do that, the results and the winning will take care of themselves. You know, true excellence, which is what we're striving for, competitive excellence, is a matter of steps. And so I think that we just have to stay focused on what they need to do in the moment they're doing it and really not get caught up in the outcomes. That is a very dangerous place to be, and that's what we've really preached, and I think the ladies are doing a great job in focusing on what they can control today because we know we have today, and we don't know what tomorrow looks like. So that's the plan. And feel free to chime in if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, just bouncing off of that, just we've always been taught to stay in our Bama bubble and to not let the outside noise um, determine what you do at the competition. And we recently learned that Pressure is a privilege, and I really that really stuck with me because it really is, and I never really thought of it like that. So just going in there with the mindset that anything can happen, but as long as you do your job and stay in that bubble, then the outcome will do its thing. <laughs> Katie? I just have one last question. Um, Dana, you already kind of touched on Shania being the freshman of the week, but Alonzo and Makari, if you all want to chime in, especially uh, Makari, being from the same state and kind of you were just a freshman last year. Just talk about how impactful it's been for her to step into the lineup right away in all four positions and compete all around right away as a freshman. Um, yeah, just growing up with her and knowing her as an ind individual and probably knowing her better than she knows herself, I'm just super proud that she stepped up and um, did her job because, you know, elite gymnastics is a lot different than college. And for her to adjust quick and especially coming in, not having a – whole summer here to adjust. Um, I'm proud of all the freshmen for how they stepped up. And um, yeah, I just, I'm very happy for her and I know we all are and she deserves it, so. I was gonna say as a senior, I know how much it takes to be able to do that. And especially coming in as a freshman, not having a full um, summer into fall, like that's huge for what she's doing right now. And we are all so proud of her and every single one of the freshmen too. Dana, this is going to be the second meet in a row, or second home meet in a row, where um, you'll be on the SEC network uh, or on the ESPN family of networks, starting out on ESPNU this week on the SEC network uh, with Bart and Kathy, uh, their primary uh, team. What kind of uh, advantage is it for the SEC to have the SEC network and to have uh, folks like Bart, uh, Connor, and Kathy uh, Johnson-Clark calling the meets for you? We are incredibly grateful that we are on television week after week. It creates relevance for our sport. And as women in athletics, being able to be on television and be role models to every single person that's watching, younger, older, these ladies work so hard. They are beasts, they are strong, they are elegant, they are beautiful. And there's just so many benefits. And so we just are, I guess the word would be grateful 
Uh, we never take it for granted. We also know that we're very blessed to be able to showcase this beautiful sport and our enthusiasm and our love for it uh, national television. So we're grateful to the SEC Nation and ESPN family uh, that they allow us to do that. And uh, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> all right, anybody else? All right, thank you, ladies. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. So a lot of fun Crimson Drive presented by Regions Bank on this Thursday afternoon. We've had a really great show from a conversation with Brian Passink about Alabama men's basketball, hearing from Nate Oates and John Petty, as well as our extended conversation with Brad Bohannon, really detailing the 2021 schedule for Alabama baseball, plus looking at what he has coming back to the diamond this year. And then we just heard Coach Duckworth, good luck to her and the gymnast as the ladies competing against Auburn coming up tomorrow night inside Coleman Coliseum. We can watch at 7.30 on the end. SEC Network. And again, men's basketball heads your way on Saturday at 5 p.m. Airtime at 4 o'clock on the network. And then even Sunday, women's basketball against the Auburn Tigers at 1 o'clock. We'll be with you on the network. And don't forget, we'll have our courtside cameras coming up on both Saturday and Sunday here on the CTSN Facebook page. So we'll really take you inside Coleman Coliseum and let you lock into Alabama basketball. But that's going to wrap up our coverage today. We'd like to say a big thank you once again to Regions Bank. Make sure you get a University of Alabama National Champions Visa check card and checks from Regions Bank. They are the official bank of the SEC. Just head to regions.com slash go Bama to order yours today. Thanks as well to our producer, Ethan Carabin, and for everybody with the University of Alabama and the Crimson Tide Sports Network, this is Roger Hoover saying thank you for watching Roll Tide, and we look forward to having you back with us next week here on Crimson Drive, presented by Regions Bank. <laughs>